Hello everyone, this is Muhammad Al Amin Mahmud Khan from Queensland, Australia. Today I'm here to present Love and Kindness as a doctoral student from International University of Morality, Florida, USA. Today I'm here to present some experts' e written books, a book by Rashmi Rai, the resources from some of the books written by the experts, and I'm here to share some facts and the benefits of love and kindness in our human life. Today I will discuss and share some articles and a book by written some written by some experts which are following The Act of Kindness, a book by Reshmi Rai, Journey of Kindness, a book by Kiri So Soar Roar, One Small Step, a book by AJ Patterson, The Art of Giving, a book by Christian Clark, Act of Giving, a book by Wood Welsh. Generosity audio by Jay Mala, Kindness audio by Nona Freeman, Kindness ebook by Faber, Frederick William, 1840 to 1863, Loving Kindness according to Buddha, presentation by Clem Clark, Developing Loving and Kindness Compassion audio by Ben Rene Fizzi, and other website information and resources from different kinds of website about love and kindness. I mean, we'll start with Australian Kindness Movement. What is an act of kindness? An act of kindness is a spontaneous gesture of goodwill towards someone or something of fellow humans, the animal kingdom and the kingdom of nature. Kind words and deeds come from a state of benevolence generated by a core response deep within all of us. When we carry out an act of kindness, it is a message from one heart to another, an act of love and an unspoken I care statement. While you may not realize it, you are performing many acts of kindness each and every day. Such things as smiling and greeting people in a friendly manner, whether they be friends, associates, or total strangers. An act of can, kind act can be sincerely complimenting someone about their hair, eyes, smile, laugh, an item of clothing or jewelry they wear, the positive outlook, their caring attitude, or something they do or have done well. It can be helping someone on or off, taking off their clothes or coat, opening a door for someone, saying please and thank you, excuse me, or and other common courtesies that unfortunately are not very common these days. It can be giving your total attention to people when they are talking. It can be offering support to someone who has a problem or listen to their problems like active listen listener. Being active listener, you can draw their attention and make them realize that you are actually caring about them. It can be helping to heal a rift or it can be not doing something unwanted. For example, refraining from such things as gossiping, finding fault or making negative judgment in our daily life, which we always do probably each and every day. Avoiding such things may help you people around, may help the people to get the get their problem overcome. A kindness can be acting out all of those lovely soft words that are in our vocabulary. Words such as caring, thoughtful, loving, sympathetic, gentle, considerate, warm and comp compassionate, understanding, forgiving, friendly, tender, amiable, genuine, and unselfish, gorgeous, helpful, supporting, nurturing. These are words that Acknowledge, respect, joy, and unite words that will build bridges between us along the humans. And oh, how, how the world needs such words. Wouldn't it be wonderful to sprinkle more those words actioning in our home, our work, our community? Humankind is capable of such beautiful things. I'm pretty sure about that. And how sad is that we lose sight of this all too easily? Will you help to warm your home, your work, your community? by using a greater number of such soft words and actions. As more and more people join kindness revelation, the downward spirit, spiral of society, fueled by selfishness, materialism, and greed will be slowed and even reversed. As this happens, it will promote an enhanced feeling of belonging in the community and giving a greater sense of meaning and purpose of, to all our lives. When carrying out an act of kindness, care should be taken not to intrude or embrace discretion is the operative word. 
give a smile or whatever and then move on unless the receiver gives out signals that they would like to talk if you linger the receiver could feel an obligation to reciprocate or perhaps become embrace and resent that kind of act some kind of acts may be able to be carried out anonymously it absorbs the receiver of any sense of awkwardness or in developments and for the giver it becomes an enjoyable game also anonymous kindness bypass or ego demands for attention and is the highest form of kindness the kinds acts we can carry out towards animal and the nature are not difficult to imagine it is in our interest to be friendly towards animals in the to the animal king kingdoms as well as to ensure they are cared for even if they are not our own we will have to duty to ensure that that animals are not mistreated or neglected and if they are to take appropriate steps to ensure the situation is rem remedied whether or not to acknowledge it humanity has a strong bond with nature and if we choose to ignore this we do so at our peril for too long nature has been considered as something that can be destroyed or plundered the well-being of the world and civilization is dependent upon this culture of abuse being eradicated we must also consider future generation and this means being more careful in our consumption of electricity and water and other natural resources like coal even though the message is being vig vigorously pumped to by the electricity and water suppliers few seem interested in reducing their usage how about others there has been a fall off on over 10 percentage points in the last 10 years of people concerned concerned about the state of environment this is alarming do what you can to help the environment it will also be helping to create a better world for your children and grandchildren so why don't you think about them let's live life with audacious dreams and big hearts which was said by steve jobs let's talk about random act of kindness a random act of kindness is a selfless act performed by a person or a group wishing to either assist or to cheer up of individual person is to be kind thoughtful use your manners give our compliments volunteer or forgive someone the phrase practice random kindness and senseless act of beauty was written by Anne Hubbard on a placement in a Sausalito, California in 1982. It was based on the phrase random acts of violence and senseless act of cruelty. Let's have some examples of events or groups. The Jewish concept of misvise used colloquially to mean a good deed or an act of kindness. Judaism teaches that the world is built on kindness. Kabbalistic teaching says kindness of emerging from the first of seven divine emotional attributes. It's to be effective, kindness must be balanced and considered. While mercy is also for the undeserving, the Lubavitch Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Sherson told reporters that the bring Moshiach Sunnah people should add in acts of goodness and kindness to the loving God. Cafe Sospeso is a tradition in the working class cafe of Naples where a person who has experienced good luck financially pays for two coffees but receives and consumes only one, the second being left until a person inquires later whether Sospeso is available. In 2006, free, the Free Hugs campaign was made popular by a music video on YouTube. The BBC One London News ran a news item entitled Hampers at Red, at ready following the kindness of offensive event on 22nd of December 2008 which saw the group work with 70 volunteers to hand out of over 35 tons of presents to the public at random as well as many of other charities and community groups the kindness offensive suggested their Christmas event on 22nd of December 2008 was the UK's largest ever random act of kindness an Australian TV show called Random Act of Kindness on Channel 9 shows host Carl Stephanie, Scott Cam, and Simon Jade McKeon giving gifts to people they identify as heroes. 
helpothers.org is the home of smile cards and partial of kindness stories, ideas, and online groups. It allows people to send random notes of kindness to others. In 2012, the Newton Project attempted to quantity the benefits of random act of kindness concept in order of to motivate people to perform additional act of kindness. On November 14, 2012, an NYPD officer Lawrence Demprimo was photographed giving socks and pair of boots he had purchased purchased for a barefooted homeless man. The photograph later went viral. Started in February 2014, the feed and the date campaign has inspired over 10,000 random acts of kindness around the world. In film and literature, we can see 1993, random kindness and senseless, senseless act of beauty and 1993 children's book published by Volcano Press and author, authored by Annie Hubbard, Margaret Palmer, Pavel and illustrated by Miami Oda with 20th anniversary edition published in 2014 by New Village Press that includes a forward penned by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. In 2000, Jerry Spinell novel Star Girl Star Girl. 2002, Join Me is a book written by the humorist, humorist Danny Wallace in which he tells of the cult he started by the accident, the group's purpose is to increase member called Joanna's and collectively known as a Karma Army to perform random acts of kindness, particularly on the Fridays, which are termed Good Fridays. Wallace has also published a book called Random Act of Kindness 365 Ways to Make the World a Nicer Place. Let's have a read at it when we get a chance. In 2007, the film Evan Almighty ends with God telling the main character, Evan, that the way to change the world is by doing one act of random kindness, ARK at the time. In 2009, Karen McCombie's book, The 17 Secrets of Karma Club, results around two girls who, inspired by their favorite film, Emily, start up their karma club, the intention of which is to do random acts of kind kindness anonymously. How about Think about the negative effects. There have been several documents, cases when random acts of kindness failed to produce good outcomes and have even worsened the situation. For example, in case of 2014 to 15 floods in Southeast Asia and South Asia and Malaysia, random acts of donations were not reaching their intended targets, rather being shown about becoming street side rubbish and the further complicated planning, cleanup and relief efforts. Additionally, people claiming to help others randomly took self feeds on social media, sparkling a disaster tourism frenzy on how was they are helping, whereby actual relief vehicles were delayed by the excessively, excessively clogged traffic. Additionally, there was some theft of relief supplied by the pilferers pretending to be among the helping. An explanation for such negative result is that those acts were random rather than the coordinated with people who are experts in tasks with a bigger picture understanding of needs resulting in unintended consequences. So if we think about the negative effects, we should not stop. These are rare. The so rare can't be example of actual human life. And now we are going to talk about some greater good. So ways where giving is good for everyone. So we can talk about say holiday shopping can be terrifying. Yes, but research suggests it's worth it. New studies attest to benefits of giving not just for the recipients but for the giver's health and happiness and for strength and entire communities. My whole point is whoever gives they feel more lot better than whoever takes. So in this way, of course, you don't have to shop to reap the benefits of giving. Research suggests the same benefits come from donating to charities and volu volunteering your time. Like a soup kitchen or a homeless shelter. How about giving a shelter to homeless? You are giving, but you're getting more better feelings, a lot better feelings than the one you're giving to. Here are some of the ways that giving is good for you and your community and for your children and Neighbors. So number one, giving makes us feel happy. A 2008 study by Harvard Business School, Professor Michael Norton and colleagues found that giving money to someone else lifted participants' happiness more than spending it on themselves, despite participant prediction that 
spending on themselves would make them happier. Hap happiness experts Sonja, a professor of psychology at the University of California, Riverside, saw similar results when she asked people to perform five acts of kindness each week for six weeks. These good feelings are reflected in our biology. In a 2006 study, George Moll and the colleagues at the National Institute of Health found that when people give to charities, it activates regions of their brain associated with their pleasure, social connection, and trust, creating a warm glow effect. Scientists also believe that the behavior religious endorphins in the brain, producing the positive feeling known as helpers high. <clears throat> Giving is good for our own health. Why is that? A wide range of research has linked different forms of generosity to better health, even among the sick and elderly. In the book, Why Good Things Happen to Good People, Stephen Post, a professor of preventive medicine and story book university reports that giving to others has been shown to the increased health benefits in people with chronic illness, including HIV and multiple sclerosis. A 1999 study led by Doug Oman at University of California, Berkeley, Berkeley found that elderly people who volunteer for two or more organizations were 44% less likely to die over a five-year period than were non-volunteers. Isn't that amazing? Even after controlling for their age, exercise, habits, general health, and the negative health habits like smoking. Stephanie Brown of the University of Michigan saw similar results in a 2003 study on elderly couples. She and her colleagues found that those individuals who provided practical help to friends, relatives, or neighbors or gave emotional support to their spouses had a lower risk of dying over a five-year period than those who did not. Interestingly, receiving help wasn't linked to a reduced death risk. Researchers suggest that one reason giving may improve physical health and longevity is that it helps decrease stress, which associates with a variety of health problems. In a 2006 study by Rachel Ferry of John Hopkins University of, and Kathleen Law of the University of Tennessee, people who provided social support to others had lower blood pressure than participants who did not, suggesting a direct psychological benefit to those who give themselves. Giving promotes cooperation and social connection. To explain that when you give, you're more likely to get back. Several studies, including work by socialists, Brent Simpson and Rob Willer have suggested that when you give to others, your generosity is likely to be rewarded by others down the line, sometimes by the person you gave to, sometimes by someone else. But it has to be done in the future. It will happen. These ex exchanges promote a sense of trust and cooperation that strengthens our ties to others. And research has shown that having positive social interaction is central to good mental and physical health. A researcher John Cassick Paul writes the book Loneliness. Him and nature and the needs for social connection, the more extensive reciprocal attribution born the social connection, the greater the advance towards health, wealth, and happiness. What's more, we when you give to others, we don't only make them feel closer to us, we also feel closer to them. Being kind and generous leads you to perceive others more positively and more charitably, writes written by Limbowski in, a, in his book, The How We Can Be Happy. And this fosters a neighbor sense of interdependence and cooperation in your social community. How about talking about giving a box gratitude? Whether you are on the giving or receiving end of a gift, the gift can elicit feelings of gratitude. It can be a way of expression, gratitude, or instant stealing gratitude in their recipient. And research has found that gratitude in integral happiness, health and social bonds. Robert Amons, Michael McClough, co-directors in research project in gratitude and thankfulness, found that teaching college students to count their blessings and cultivate gratitude caused them to exercise more, be more optimistic, and feel better about their lives overall. A recent study led by the Nathan, Nathan Carl Lambert and Florida State University found that expressing gratitude to close friend and romantic partner strength, strengthens our sense of connection to that person. 
Barbara Fredrickson and Pioneer Happiness Trisacha suggests that cultivating gratitude in your everyday life is one of the keys to increasing personal happiness. When we ex express your gratitude in words or actions, you not only boost your own positivity but other people's as well, she writes in her book Positivity. And in the process of reinforce their kindness and strengthen your bond to one from another. Giving is contagious. When we give, we don't only have the immediate recipient of our gift, we also spur and ripple effect generosity through our community. A study by James Fowler, University of California, San Diego, and Nicholas Christakis of Harvard published that in the Proceedings of International Academy of Science shows that when one person behaves generously, it inspires observers to behave generously later, it inspires others as well at the same time towards different people. In fact, the researcher found that altruism could spread by three degrees from person to person to person to a person. As a result, the right, each person in a network can influence dozens or even hundreds of people, some of whom he or she does not know and has not met at all. Giving has also been linked to the release of oxytocin, a hormone also released during sex and breastfeeding. That includes that indices as feelings and warmth, euphoria, and connection to others. In laboratory studies, Paul Jack, the director of Central Neuroeconomic Studies at the Clement Gratitude Graduate University, has found that the dose of oxytonic will cause people to give more generously and to feel more empathy towards others with symptoms lasting 82 hours at least. So whether you buy gifts, volunteer your time, or donate money to charity the, for this holiday season, your giving is much more than just a year-end show. It may help you build stronger social connection and even jumpstart a cascade of generosity through your community. And don't be surprised if you find yourself benefiting from a big dose of happiness in that process. Now we, uh, I'm going to talk about small acts of, acts of generosity and the neuroscience of gratitude in the broader aspects. Recent studies have shown that generosity and gratitude go hand in hand both at a psychological and neurobiological level. Generosity and gratitude are separate sides of the same coin. They are symbolic. Fortunately, each of us has the free will basic free will to kickstart the neurobiological feedback loop, an upward spiral of well-being that is triggered by small acts of generosity and gratitude each and every day of our lives. Why not practice a small act of generosity today? In previous psychology, the evolutionary biology of altruism wrote about the variety of interdisciplinary studies that identified the roots of why compassion, co cooperation, basic teamwork and being a part of community are central of our individual and collective survival. Ultimately, it appears that loving kindness trumps Machiavellianism and an every man for himself, modus operandi, even when it comes to survival of the fittest. In the new study conducted in the University of Southern California, USC, researchers used fMRI brain imaging to map the neurobiological correlates of gratitude. The objective of USC study was to examine a wide range of gratitude experience in context of gift giving or to identify natural basic neuroscience correlates of gratitude to the whole brain level. In October 2015 study, Neural Correlates of Gratitude was published in the journal Frontline Eye Psychology. Senior author Antonio Demacia is director of Brain and Creativity Institute. BCI and Don's Five Neuro Margining Institute of USC, a professor of psychology and neurology. Damasio is world renowned for his neuroscientific research of how emotions play a central role in our social decision making, basic or cognition life. Gratitude is fundamental trait that holds the tapestry of our social fabric together, feelings of gratitude, nature of individual mental health, basic health, and fortify our bonds up with other people. So why don't we follow these terms and facts? 
To conclude that in a press release, Thomas Sio concluded, gratitude rewards generosity and maintains the cycle of the healthy social behavior. As the research shows, generosity and the gratitude work in tandem in ways that benefit both giver and the receiver. Hopefully, this research will inspire each of us infuse small acts of generosity into our daily interaction with others and to reciprocate the goodwill with gratitude. To elaborate with this generosity, I want to elaborate on this definition. The generosity is also called largest or large C in the virtue of not being tied down concerns about one's position. Generosity leads to charity and forgiveness. Let's see other uses. It is sometimes used to meaning of charity, the virtue of giving without anything in return. It can involve offering time, assets, or talents to aid someone in need. In times of natural disaster, reports, re relief re efforts frequently provided voluntarily by individuals or groups acting ultimately in gifts of time, resources, goods, money, etc. Generosity is a guiding principle for many registered charities, foundations, and non-profit organizations, which is a symbol of love and kindness in our, in our human life. Generosity can also be spending time, money, or labor for others without being rewarded in return. Although the term generosity often goes hand in hand with charity, many people in the public's eyes want recognition for their good deeds, which is a part of generosity, but not fully generosity. I would say. Donations are needed to support organizations and communities. However, generosity should not be limited to times of great need such as natural disaster or extreme situation. That can be go keep going every day in our daily life. Generosity is not solely based on our one's economic status but instead includes the individual pure intention of looking out for society's common good and giving from the heart. Generosity should affect the individual's passion to help others in the community. Etymology, the modern English word generosity derives from the Latin words good generous, which means of noble birth, which it itself was passed down to English through the old French word generax. During the 17th century, however, the meaning of meaning and the use of word began to change. Generosity came increasingly to identify not literal family heritage, but a nobility of spirit thought to be associated with high birth that is, with various admirable qualities that could now vary from person to person, depending on not on family history but on a, whether a person actually possessed the qualities. In this way, generosity increasingly came in 17th century to signify and verify the traits of character action historically associated with the ideals of actual nobility. Then during the 18th century, the meaning of generosity continued to evolve with direction Generating the more specific contemporary meaning of many flames, open handedness, and the liberal liberality in the giving of money possession of to others. Let's talk about generosity in religious to conclude my presentation. In Buddhism, generosity is one of the ten perfections and eight anti dot to the self chosen poison called greed. Generosity is known as charity in the Bible and done in the Eastern religious scriptures. In Islam, Quran states that whatever we give away generously with the intention of pleasing God, Allah, He will replace it. God knows, Allah knows what is in the heart of man. Say, truly my Lord enlarges the provision for whom He wills of His slaves and also restricts it for Him and whatsoever is spent to of anything in God's cause, he will replace it. He, Allah, is the best of providers. Quran 34, 39. This is all from my side today. If you like my video, please like and share. Don't forget to start doing some love and kindness and some generous act of activity in our daily life. If you have any question or any suggestion about my videos, please don't forget to comment and ask me a question. Thank you very much. Have a good one.